be it in a networking situation, in a dating situation, whatever it is, there's two common responses. You're going to give them your entire phone number and maybe flip two digits. Congratulations, you give them the entire phone number, you try to obfuscate by two digits. That doesn't work. So usually what ends up happening is someone's like, oh, just go and text me with that, or give me a call with that real quick. And then they phone you. So they're like, ah, oh, you have my number. The way that we fight this is we go through and have a separate number that we flex as a muscle, and we use that. They say, you want to contact me? Here you go, this is the number. It's a real active number, but it's not your number. So, just something to think about. So, in continuing down that path, I thought, okay, so you want to take it to the extreme and you want to get off of where Facebook is owning all your information, but you still want to interact with people. So you set up a sock puppet account. Essentially, you create an avatar online that allows you to log into whatever service that is, social media, rewards card, anything else, but you have it to where it's not connected directly to you. And we'll get into a little bit more about that later. But this gives you another box you can put that in. Also, if that comes under fire or something else happens, you know you can burn that account, and it's not something that you've been sitting on for 20 years. It doesn't have all your contacts. You're protecting the ripple. Once someone burns that, it's not going to affect your father, your mother, your company, everything else like that. Whatever. It doesn't go further into your organization or your, your personal life. So, we can set up anything with a public account that's online. There isn't anything specific that we need to go through and do or don't do. Anything that you have a login for can be set up as a public account. There are some things you can't get around, like if you're doing emails and you're doing Facebook. There are some places that don't accept Google voice numbers as authentication. There's ways around that. But the point is to start thinking and building the security mindset in regards to privacy. Um, who are we trying to avoid by doing this? And your answer will vary on who you are, uh, whatever your threat model is. If you're 19, 20, and you're still in college, getting out, you don't have any kids, and you've got an internship, your, your threat model is probably very low. But the longevity of that account is what will compromise you over the long term. So if you post stuff in your 2021, and it comes to being 40, 45, and people are pulling up information about you, taking shots at Jose Cuervo bar or whatever, and that, that eliminates you from a position. Or if you're LEO, if you're law enforcement, or if you are uh, digital forensics, or if you're red team, and you get somebody fired because they were doing stupid stuff, they show up on your front doorstep with a shotgun because they got fired, and your information is out on Spokio or People or wherever else it is, it's something that can be better protected. So we also want to go through and avoid, you know, Black hat hackers, we, we want to look at the, the attack space of, of anything that we can go through and have there. Data brokers, data warehouses, anybody who's going to go through and track your movements, your purchases, anything else like that. I feel like I need to get away from that because I don't think that's a fair way for them to represent me and sell me to other corporations. That's all whatever you want, but that's, that's just my, my theory there. Um, and then disinformation campaigns. Um, People ask me now, well, now that Facebook's been, you know, proven to be selling your information, should I just close my account? No. You want to go through and change the information that you have so that it aggregates back into the system. You want to go through and change where you work, where you live, your last name, uh, anything that you can to go through and get that information into the system so that it rolls through, and then all the people that are buying that, now they consume that malicious data. You can also go through and do online surveys. You can do anything that's forward-facing, and you can build where you were to what you want it to be. And then you can start compartmentalizing other websites, social media, rewards cards, other things. And you can have that be a separate avatar. So why set this up for defense? So on the red team side, we use sock puppet accounts to go through and gather information so that we can you know, either take a fingerprint of your organization or your personal, um, you know, day-to-day -day life, whatever it is. But for the defense side, this actually, for the blue team, really has some, some good potentials as well. If you were to make accounts that were new employees for an organization, and then at that point you were trying to connect with other employees through LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever they are, you may be able to find out what data they're leaking about your company as a social media honeypot kind of situation. 
Uh, on the other side, you can see what organizations are also trying to friend you because you may be working in a certain area, the finance, the marketing, and the IT section. So if there are people who don't have anything to do with your industry or anything to do with your company or don't know this person because it's a fake person and they're still trying to get access to you know, your social media information, it may be because they're targeting your, your accounts. So it is something that you can also set as a tripwire for maybe the defense side. So let's get into some of the more fun stuff here. Um, and this is just basic overview. Like I said, I only had about 25 to 30 minutes with me to do this talk. And privacy is a very difficult thing to compact down to half an hour. Um, I can give you a primer basically on this stuff. And if you're interested, you can take the next steps. You can talk to other people. You can join um, different Slack groups or rocket chat groups and stuff like that to just do more. You can kind of post it yourself and make sure that you know what, what you have out there and what, what, uh, what needs to be closed. But you need to build the security mindset. You need to go through and actually start looking at layering of security from a digital and a physical perspective. So if you are going to start with like making SOC accounts and things like that, pro tip, you may not want to make it from the same ISP that you that you log in from every single day. There may be some connections there, especially with Facebook and stuff, where they say, oh, you're logging in from the same IP range as this one. You guys must know each other. And all that can kind of compromise your stuff. So, if you're out of town, if you're in Starbucks, if you're anywhere else, you can start creating other accounts and they will have different initial IP ranges from where they started from. You can do it from different hardware if you want to back it up that way. You can go from Raspberry Pi's. No, oh, thank God. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you can go from Raspberry Pi's as a throwaway computer to uh, new tablets and things like that where the MAC address doesn't have any pings off of your home IP address and stuff. So you can walk it back as far as you want. Now it's all jazzy. Uh, so you can walk it back as far as you want because the cleaner that you build these accounts up, the less likely they are actually attached to your physical or your personal information. So you want to, everybody wants to use credit because credit's an amazing tool, but if you're not using it actively, if it's not something where you're trying to get a house, if you're not developing your credit or actually looking for loans and stuff, put a credit freeze on it. Put a credit freeze on it for you, for your kids, for your grandparents, anything, as long as it's not being used. Because someone else is looking at it if we're not looking at it. So, kind of the same thing. You want to go through and use a different telephone number because it's that point of proxy. You want to make, make, make sure that you're certain, you know, flexing that muscle. You want to secure your email if at all possible. A lot of people use Gmail. I'm not going to, to tell you to use ProtonMail exclusively, but I really like ProtonMail. Um, ProtonMail is encrypted end to end. Uh, they also have a fantastic VPN. Uh, it's a free tool that you can use. LavaBit is also another one that you can use. And then, uh, sorry, I just left people off. Um, ProtonMail also has a, a good VPN and, and a paid membership where you can get multiple email addresses as the page. It's like five bucks a month, but you get up to ten email addresses. Um, another trick with email addresses is, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but you can add something on in front of the email address. So let's say you want to register this email address with Netflix. You put Netflix plus and then your email address. And what that does is it allows you to see when the email comes through, it'll come through as Netflix plus you know, michaeljames.com or something like that or whatever. So you can, you can start to delineate where these emails are coming in from by adding, you know, something on the, on the beginning of the email. So it's still going to all filter to your one Gmail account there or your Proton Mail or whatever else you use. But if you add something on in the front of it, it helps you to go through and see where this email is coming from. Same thing, uh, I know everyone uses text messaging, no one ever leaves voicemails anymore, it makes me sad. Uh, use wire, use signal. A lot of people have a problem with signal because you have to actually have your, your real telephone number to send to signal so that it can make your, your account for you, but then it's encrypted end to end. I, I prefer signal, but wire is nice because you can actually share group spaces, so you can bring other people in and work with others without having to set up either you know, a CNC for uh, or C2C, whatever, for, for communications or anything else like that. It works on every device. It's, it's, it's easy. 
which is another thing we need to go through and talk about is with, with the use of all these open source tools and things like that, if it's not easy to set up, if it's not easy to do, people are going to go through and use it. And that's really been a lot of the, the, the wall there. But things that are coming along and that are easy to use and applications you can just download and you can get to your sales guys, uh, I'm not picking on sales guys or anything, just uh, it, it makes it that much more secure because there's nothing for them to screw up. So, like I said, Slack, um, you know, I, I don't know if anybody else has been seeing the privacy, uh, I don't know if faux pas is really the right word, but there's, there's a lot of inconsistencies in Slack and who can see what private messages and things like that. Uh, Rocket Chat is a good alternative. I think as we go more towards this open source um, kind of container ecosystem, there will be other things like Mastodon, which has the ability to host their own instance of a social media group. And so you can kind of protect that and divide like who comes in, who doesn't. Rocket Chat's the same way. You can you can set it up. There's an awful limit for the free version. Uh, you can have API call outs, webhooks, all that stuff. It's actually a little bit better. It's a little janky, but um, as it progresses, I think it will be, if not better, um, on par with Slack and stuff like that. And just information the hell out of everything. Uh, like I said, fill out surveys when you can, or for that new Home, Home Depot credit card and stuff. Put your new telephone number on there. Put alternative address forms on there. And, you, know, you don't have to lie or cheat in anything. Just fill out information over so you're giving to them. Don't say you have to tell the truth to data brokers. That's not the way they work. They're not telling us the truth. So, um, I've seen people go as far as get library cards, uh, where it's a it's a government institution, where they are giving all this other information to a library, getting a physical library card, and then using that to go through and get even further along in regards to separate uh, containerized information. There. Don't do this. Don't lie. Don't 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 change your name. Don't go through and try to get fake credentials off the internet or the dark web or something. Uh, first off, changing your name just gives you a, a, a public record that you change your name. And any OSINT person worth their salt is going to go through and do a public record search. And if you change your name, they're going to find that document. There's not a lot of stuff you can do about that. Uh, I'm not advocating for anyone to go through and try to get fake passports or social security numbers or anything else like that because it really is not worth it. Um, and don't lie to the police because they'll catch you. I mean, nine times out of ten. Um, on a personal note, this is just kind of something that I've been working with. Uh, Chrome, like with Google and everything else, collects all the data. I've been myself moving towards actually going uh, like a Firefox, DuckDuckGo type of privacy search engines, things like that. They actually work really well. Um, I've not seen any uh, bad results of that stuff. Uh, one other thing I would advise is if you are going to go through and set up a VPN on your computer or your cell phone, set a VPN up on your router. If you have the ability to go through and set it up and there's a point of failure on the VPN on your phone or a VPN on the router, at least you still have one or the other that's operational. So it's that layer effect of security that allows you to go through and got to keep doing that stuff. Um, these are just some of the tools that we were kind of going through and talking about. I put this up there so that people can go just take pictures and stuff. This is about what it is. You know, the Raspberry Pi multi-login app is something where you can actually streamline a bunch of different computers, and your output will actually be whatever you want it to go through and be. So, if you want your machine, which is a Windows 7 device, to come out as an XP device, you can change that forward-facing information, and that'll actually present. So, if somebody is doing OSINT on you, it'll appear as if you have an XP device there. Uh, this this is kind of the final bit here. Um, you know. We want to start the security mindset. We want to be cognizant of where we're logging in from and what we're logging. We want to make sure that if we have the ability to go through and do it at a physical location that we can. Uh, we want to make sure that our family members are not the people that are ratting us out in regards to this stuff. Uh, but it happens. So share this information with them so that they can actually be more private and be more secure as well. Because in the long run, a lot of this stuff is going to come back and haunt them. And do a 30 day challenge. Um, I don't know if anybody listens to the uh, Privacy and Security Podcast with, uh, yeah, there you go, uh, with uh, Mike Basil and uh, Justin. Sure. Yeah. Uh, he's got an excellent reference on his on his website for the 30-day uh, Privacy and Security um, Challenge there. And he'll go through all the stuff. And it's it's a little more intensive than this stuff, but it's kind of about it. Um, and rate my talk. I don't know. I don't care, actually.
Uh, that's all I got. Anybody have any questions? Anything else? I don't know. Where, where are we going? Uh, yeah. What's up? What's your opinion on I don't know that I'm familiar with that matrix.org. It's basically supposed to be a non-federated chat platform. So like Riot.im is the app that you can use on your phones. It's just kind of like a replacement probably a thing to more into the like X and G. Oh, okay. so but it's all local based, it's all it's all written in there, it's not. Right, like you can set up your own servers, your own chat groups. Yep. I think it's meant to be like an open source Slack. I'll have to check that out, but but anything that you actually own and anything that you can physically take control of as opposed to rely on ASW servers or some or cloud based anything, uh, it, it gets it, it puts the privacy kind of back in your hands and you can allow what's out and what's in. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I like Firefox because they allow you to detail the controls out with almost everything. It's really, really nice. Um, but I'll have to look at that. So thank you. Anybody else? Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it.